Xbox gets a significant new feature and repairing your controller just got a little bit easier. Oh yes, it is Friday, my friends. Happy Friday. Hopefully you had a wonderful week. We have somehow blown through July. It is now August and uh, well, here we are just podcasting on a Friday, video, audio and everything in between. There's really nothing in between. Anyways, uh, hopefully you had a wonderful week. There's a lot to talk about. Things going on in the world, Xbox, things going on in the world, Windows, my two favorite wear things in the world from a technology perspective, whatever. Let's just dive in. So this week, Microsoft is officially old yellow ring putting it six feet under jimmy hoffa 86 whatever you want to call it cortana uh cortana is is dead i mean microsoft shipping an update with windows insiders that really it just makes it completely useless and the problem here is because cortana is built into windows it, you, you can't just remove it it's not an app per se but microsoft is putting it to the it's done it is done long live Cortana effectively, but it's really AI, it's really ChatGPT, it's really Copilot will be coming along. Uh, but in like the same vein, uh, Google Assistant is dead as well, sort of, and Bard is taking over. Now, Google Assistant isn't going away, but it, it's like they're ripping the guts out and they replace it with Bard. And as you can see, all of these little chatbot things are really just starting to get replaced by AI. It's sort of a natural growing up. But the, 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 the series and the Alexas and the Cortanas and the Google Assistants that we knew of yesterday are slowly, but pretty effectively being evolved. So we'll see if AI really makes a difference. I, candidly, I would have thought that these voice assistants were going to be way more pervasive than they really are today. It seems like the novelty has kind of come and gone. They have their place and we're, they're not going away forever. However, they are not becoming the primary means of uh, spatial computing or whatever terminology they were, Microsoft was using and Amazon and everybody in the industry back in the day. Speaking of spatial computing, this has nothing to do with spatial computing. What a terrible segue. Anyways, uh, Microsoft leaked its own tool this week. It's their, their staging tool. So if you have a insider build of Windows, Microsoft has a staging tool, as they call it, that allows you to unlock certain features depending on just what you want to see and do. It's an internal tool that was not supposed to make its way to the external world, but I believe part of the bug beta bash, Microsoft accidentally published this tool and made it available and it would allow you to unlock features features that were previously hidden in your build of Windows 11 Insider stuff. Now, before you get like super excited that, wow, you can go unlock Windows 12, no, not really. If you're familiar with Vive tool, at least I think that's how you pronounce it, it's effectively the same thing as that. And it's really just a lot for the A-B testing. So that's kind of what it is. Now, hilariously, hilariously, Microsoft realized they screwed up. And so what did Microsoft do? They added this app, the staging tool app, to the Defender list as a known malicious tool to try to automatically remove it from your device. But once it's out on the internet, the staging tool is not going away. Microsoft might make it harder to run on your PC but either way, that was a, that's a pretty massive screw up when an internal tool like that uh, it escapes the confines of the walls of Redmond. So, uh, speaking of escaping the walls, Microsoft's Copilot is now rolling out a beta channel insider, so you don't have to just be on the, the tighter rings. Microsoft is now pushing this. It, it's an app, but it's like a web app, but it's like a co-pilot thing. I don't quite know how we want to characterize this thing, but now you can run it on uh, beta channels as well. And spatially, uh, spatial audio is coming to Microsoft Teams now to everybody. I can't decide if this is a good feature or not. I'm sure it doesn't really matter. You can turn it off. But effectively, what it allows you to do is allows you to put pinpoint where people are talking from. So when you're looking at your screen of people on your screen, and somebody's in the top right. Now the audio, if you have something that supports spatial audio, will be coming from the top right. So that's, I guess that's kind of a good use for it. It's not a bad use for it at the end of the day. So there you go. Uh, Surface hardware has been a lot of topic of conversation. Microsoft's last quarterly report was not good for Surface. It was down, I believe, 20%. Now that was below the industry drop because the industry has been having its own issues. But if from Windows Center and from Zach, and I believe this to be fully accurate, uh, from my own sources, there is no Surface Go with ARM chip this year, and they're they're pushing an Intel chip instead. Yeah, the the world of Windows on ARM continues to be this thing that just always feels like it's just slightly out of reach, right? Qualcomm is doing their thing and they're trying their best, but doesn't feel like they're getting a lot of industry support. And Microsoft not putting the Surface Go, which I always think I have one within arm's reach. Everyone, ah, right? Yeah. Ah, here's an older Surface Go. Microsoft putting a, an ARM chip 
in something like this makes a lot of sense. It's small, it's compute, it's mobile. But the fact that Microsoft isn't doing it really just kind of tells you the story of Windows on ARM. And it's disappointing because myself included, I'd love to see ARM be neck and neck with Intel and AMD, a third player in the Windows marketplace that's really driving value and more importantly, driving competition is a wonderful thing. But it just always feels like ARM is just, it's not this one, it's the next, the next one will do it. The next chip, Qualcomm will get it in like, here we are, uh, more than a decade later and ARM just still really doesn't have any meaningful impact within the world of Windows at the end of the day. Speaking of Windows, Windows 11 and 12, I guess that's right, 12, um, although I don't believe Microsoft officially called Windows 12, they just said next versions of everything else, are killing off TLS 1.0 and 1.11. These are security protocols or security functionality, and so they are going away from support. And speaking of Windows 11, according to Stack Counter, which I am well aware is not a perfect measurement of the broader Windows ecosystem, they report that Windows 11 is on about 24% of PCs. The question becomes, is that good? Is that relevant? I don't, it, it feels like it should be way more, but then you gotta remember that Microsoft changed the security baseline requirement, so it's harder for Windows or legacy devices to upgrade. Microsoft's drawing that line in the sand about who can and cannot run Windows 11, effectively what will be Windows 12. And yeah, I know a lot of enterprises have not moved to Windows 11 just through my own personal work at Stardock. Uh, just talking with corporate clients, they're all still firmly on 10. And honestly, it doesn't sound like they're in any hurry to move to Windows 11. We'll just put it that way. And the Loop, the Loop, which is a Notion competitor, Microsoft's newest app is now available in the Windows Store. It was previously only available as a web app. So if that excites you, you can go download that now from the store. You can, get just, you can just go do that. Couple mouse clicks, you can get yourself a Loop on a desktop. Now, on to, ooh, I just smacked the mic there on to the gaming news because there's this is pretty significant so microsoft is starting to test xbox game streaming to discord you're gonna be like brad why is this so so significant well first off let's not us forget that microsoft considered trying to buy discord and apparently discord rejected their offer and it just never really made sense it's now to microsoft's buying activision for nearly 70 billion dollars but discord is huge in the gaming community it's actually i would actually start to argue that it's beginning to sort of break out maybe a little bit from the gaming community there's other communities that are now moving to discord as well it has become the new chat sort of area and so microsoft streaming natively from xbox to discord really sort of opens the door to a potential eventual twitch competitor right it's allowing you to bring your favorite content to your favorite community through discord that is very significant microsoft doing that natively is a very good thing and i think this is not only going to help discord i think this is going to help xbox too to be honest because hey at the end of the day if you have a discord community and you want to stream to those people who you already chat with now you can just do it directly from the box and you don't have to use twitch not everybody wants to use twitch and not everybody wants to use youtube because their community exists on discord discord has some massively large communities and that i think I think this is pretty darn significant. I really do. I think good job, Microsoft. I think this is going to go over well. Moving on here. So uh, when it comes to repairing your controller, it's not always the easiest thing. And Microsoft is now selling Elite Series controller replacement parts and guides and everything else about how to replace this. They're not super cheap, I will mind you. And But I think the good thing here is that, hey, you can. You can do this if you want to. You can now repair the controller rather than going out and buying a new one. It's really hard to fault Microsoft really for doing this at all. Like, I think this is a great thing. Uh, my, only, my only one sort of minor hilarious point is that when you go to buy this stuff on Microsoft's website, it says Microsoft exclusive. Um, it's, like, it's like, why? Like, why would you put that? It's like, hey, your stuff broke. Microsoft exclusive. We'll let you repair it. Uh, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. I'm, I'm happy they can do that. Uh, the CMA, uh, you know, jumping back into Activision because we're trying to see how soon that gets close. The CMA has given effectively four days for the public to comment on Microsoft Activision Blizzard. By the time you're listening to this, that timeline has already passed, so it doesn't really matter. It, this is a procedural thing to get the, to get through the doors and finalize and close the stuff. So, uh, anyways, not too much to report there. Microsoft, along like along with Cortana, by the way, is sunsetting its Xbox console companion app. This has always been so weird because there's been an Xbox app, a console companion app. The companion app going away. You're gonna have one place to rule them all, except 
The one awkward part, the one thing that hasn't been solved yet, which I'm assuming they're going to fix, is that it's harder to view your own Xbox game clips, your DVR content through the, the standard app. What would make the most sense is that you just have a OneDrive folder that just says, here's all your game clips, just put them in there, and then say, if you want to do it, inside the Xbox app, it's just a link and just a, a, a global link to your drive at the end of the day. So I, I don't I don't know. Uh, that is that is what they're doing. Also, starting this week, the Xbox Game Pass Core will be starting to being tested with Xbox Insiders. Microsoft does say that if you see continue to see Xbox Live branding sort of sprinkled throughout the dashboard, don't be alarmed. It's just them cleaning up the edge cases. You've got to remember Xbox Live. That branding has been ingrained in Microsoft for decades and it's going to be hidden and showing up in places that Microsoft will keep forgetting about and as it gets reported they will swap out the visual assets but anyways Xbox Game Pass Core, Xbox Game Pass and all that stuff not well it's been testing but the, the core model or level tier is now going to be tested with insiders starting out and also this week there is a new Stormcloud Vapor special edition controller it looks pretty cool it's sort of like a gray misty imagine if you had a uh, gray metallic paint in a paint can and you took a paint stick and you swirled it around that is exactly what it would look like so there you go there you go my friends let's jump on to my favorite part of the week which is the question so uh kicking it off here metal bear says Baldur gates 3 has released on pc this week along with it came some debate about the game's console release the developers have been public about the challenges of optimizing the game twice for two SKUs on the Xbox front, namely the Series S not hitting their desired performance target, especially in split screen. Do you think that the S and X have different hardware performance targets, memory bandwidth, clock speed, CPU, and all that stuff will further impact the development and relationships with uh, Microsoft? It seems that there's only been the primary to optimize for one SKU it, on the PS5 side. So there you go. Okay, so this is a narrative we actually heard pre-launch of Xbox actually remember like some developers are saying the Series S is going to hold back the performance on the Xbox branding side or the Xbox side so far I, and anybody please feel free feel free to correct me if I'm wrong this has really been I think the first time this has become an issue issue I mean every so often we hear that hey there's different performance modes depending on which console so I mean yes the Series S is a less performant console that is by design that is what Microsoft did it's also not designed to run 4k and so here's a developer poo-pooing on the Xbox side, which is a little interesting because typically you get some vendor support when you're building this stuff. And so to come out and do that publicly is an interesting use case or interesting uh, methodology, I guess, at the end of the day. But the reality is, is how many other games have launched that haven't come out and said this or haven't had these issues. Now, Baldur Gate is a different style of game. And there, I'm not saying that the developer is wrong in their assumption or statements. I'm just saying that, hey, at the end of the day, a lot of games have launched on both platforms. And this is really the first time we're hearing of these public complaints. And so I think it's one of those things, right? One is an outlier. Two is a trend sort of thing, if you're familiar with that phrasing. And I want to get too caught up in it. At the end of the day, PC will always be the most flexible because it's always going to be the most powerful hardware. And so it's not surprising to hear them say that on the PC side. It, it, the PC is easier because it's like, hey, you can build for a 4090 Ti if you really want. Now, ha the majority of the community is not running a 4090 Ti, but they are running probably more modern hardware uh, than realistically the Xbox Series X or PS5, which are several years old. And you got to remember that when those consoles launch, they're already out of date. So there you go. Cadguard says, happy Brad, hell, happy Brad, I am happy. Hey Brad, happy Friday, happy Friday to you, Cadguard. Random questions, I'm at Gen Con this week, do you play board games? Uh, there is a Kickstarter for a Call of Duty board game, I did not know there was a Kickstarter for a Call of Duty board game. Uh, in our household, we do play, actually, for my daughter's birthday, and this will make a lot of sense if you follow, like, what I do for, sort of, relaxation i guess it's relaxation um the last board game we got was actually a national parks board game and my daughter got it for her birthday and we played it over the summer a couple times and so we do i wouldn't say we're like every saturday night we're playing board games but we certainly do and Kagar also goes on to say what's your take on the shenanigans going on in twitter about the console wars twitter is going to be twitter and just be Twitter. Uh, actually, it's not even called Twitter anymore. It's called, what is it called? X. Elon's X. Is X. X.com. About the console wars. The console wars are, are you know, like, um, the Big Bang happened. Planet Earth was formed. Humans took over the planet. And console wars happened uh, not long after the first man started walking. Or woman started walking on the planet. Like, it's just some, No matter what happens in the world, there will always be console wars. Until the sun explodes and takes us all out. 
Uh, Rafik 145 says, Hi, do you think that Microsoft's strategy with AI is really working? It seemed from the beginning that it would propel Microsoft to a new height, but now there's not, but now there's a lot of skepticism about it. It's way too early. It is way too early. You got to remember that really, and it's not completely accurate what I'm about to say, but AI really didn't start taking off until like fall of last year. So we haven't really even hit a full year of the hype cycle yet. And granted, there's always going to be hype up front. And then what really matters is what happens over the next. 36 months, right? That's kind of it. Remember like Cortana, I was talking about the beginning of this podcast, Cortana, Alexa, Google Assistant, all that stuff. At the beginning, there's that hype cycle and then it fades and and test will be time. Time will be the true test here to see if this AI stuff really makes a difference. Now, that being said, I think on the productivity side, like in the world of office and being able to find data and contextualize data, I do think it will stick around for a while. Uh, It may not always be like, here's a copilot thing, type it in here, but it'll always be in the background helping. I, I am pretty confident in that. I mean, I use uh, ChatGPT for multiple times a week in various phases, everything from like, hey, check my crappy code that I wrote and see if it can do this Python script any better to give me 10 different ways to say this phrasing. That sort of stuff is incredibly valuable to me. However, it's going to take time. Like Microsoft even said, look, we're not going to expect uh, AI revenue like from the stuff we're doing to happen for a couple quarters out at this point. So just keep that in mind. Uh, Mr. PKI dropping two questions this week. Here's a fun one. Does anyone actually like and understand the new Entra marketing? Entra, Entra, I don't know. Is it Entra? I keep thinking Enter. Entra marketing name that is Active Directory. I don't know. The, the licensing around this is always befuddling. Microsoft Microsoft loves like taking a, a core product that they've had for whatever, rebranding with a flashy name, and then changing the licensing and, and expectations for it. So does anybody understand it? I'm sure somebody does. Do other people like it? No. I mean, I get why they do it. It's a, it's a perfect Microsoft thing. And somebody probably got a big promotion going, saying, look, we can take that as or Active Directory. It's technically more than Active Directory. Give it a new fancy brand name. Sl- splash some promotion around it. We can uh, license it out slightly differently. So, yeah. And then Mr. PKI says, when all the Microsoft AI... In- <laughs> when are all the Microsoft AI integrated solutions going to RTM and be publicly available? Our best guess... Best- all of them, I will never. We don't know because there's like Mr. PKI. You've been around the block. You know how complicated Microsoft is. There's going to be AI in literally everything and in preview with private customers for again until the sun explodes. However, the desktop companion web app thing, I would expect 23 H two if I could remember what year we are in. So that would probably be the first time we see some of it land on the desktop. Again, the big question becomes: How is Microsoft going to make money doing it? Because they've already noted, even on their earnings call, that these queries are expensive. And wrapping it up for the week is McSyfa. He or she, I should say. Uh, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of befuddling in the industry about dwindling PC sector. Lamentation, lamentation. Uh, any new form factors? Yeah. So let's just sort of sum this up here. So his point here is that, Hey, the form factors and the PC sales are declining and actually Intel and AMD are reporting declining sales. The PC sales are at a bit of a downward, not even a bit, a a ski slope downward that is well known across the industry. And so it's like, Hey, what is going to go on here to rejuvenate PC sales and nobody's well I shouldn't say nobody's gonna like this answer I think the real thing here is gonna have to be two part one Microsoft and its partners have to figure out AI solutions that actually make people want to buy a PC like like doing doing things that's like well your webcam can now automatically blur your background without having you to do anything that does it better is not a reason somebody's gonna go out and spend fifteen hundred two thousand dollars on a high-end laptop that is not why people are gonna do it I don't have a great answer for what is going to be the thing that really makes AI wonderful. If I did, I would be trying to build it at Stardock and we'd be trying to do that ourselves. But I candidly, like, it's, is AI Copilot, like, uh, turn on Bluetooth at 7 p.m., the killer feature that we really want, or make sure dark mode is on at 9.02 p.m. every single night and turns off at 7.03 a.m. every morning. Like, that is, that is not a killer use case scenario and Cortana could do some of that. So I don't know what those scenarios are yet, but that is probably right now. I don't know if form factors are going to do it. You're always going to have Lenovo, as you point out, do these kind of crazy fun form factor things. Microsoft tried to take a flyer by building the Surface Neo, but then canceled that project. They've also pretty much canceled the Surface Duo. Well, the Duo was not Windows. It was still a PC vendor trying to push the boundaries of what we kind of expect from these types of devices. So the Neo's gone. Windows 10X is gone. 
it's just the nature of uh, the cycle, right? You got to remember that the pandemic pulled forward a bunch of PC sales. So PC sales that were going to happen in the next year or two years were happening all condensed into a single year. So when you start comparing it to those figures, PC sales are going to be in a slump for quite a while until things just start to level out again. And then here's what's going to happen. The same thing that happened in the late two or 2010s or 20 teens would whatever you want to call it, there will be a resurgence, not necessarily because of the pandemic. If you go look at the headlines prior to the pandemic, people, there were headlines like the PC is back. People are buying it again. It was just the natural cycle. The PC is a, it's not a legacy product, but it's a mature product on the graph. There's a, a, a typical bell curve that products fall and PCs are ne actually a little bit past the top. They are a stable, mature business and they're going to continue to make billions of dollars for Microsoft every single quarter, but they're not going to grow to make tens of billions of dollars. We've already seen that on the, on the uh, ARM side, they're not really gaining traction. They're trying to do things there, but it's not moving the needle in terms of PC sales. And Microsoft is just trying to keep, you know, tread water and keep things as they are. Windows 12 will certainly help. If you want to look at the next inflection point, Windows 12 will typically do it because companies like Best Buy can say, you, your PC doesn't have Windows 11 or Windows 10. You need Windows 12. And so you need to buy this 12 because you have a 10 or 11 and this is newer and better. That will help PC sales. That legitimately does. When we saw that with Windows 11. We saw it with Windows 10, 7. It always happens. So... I don't know if we're going to get any brand new spanking form factors that are just going to magically blow up what Windows is today. So, yeah. Um, there you go. That's sort of my little... I don't want to call it a rant because I think PC sales are fine. I think gaming PCs are still going to continue to exist. And Microsoft is just... They have a stable... Eight to nine billion dollars every single quarter coming in from Windows. And Microsoft is happy just to keep it at that. And that is what they're trying to do at the end of the day. So, there you go. I don't know if you guys know of any form factor that is dramatically going to change how PCs work. I would love to hear it, but I don't I don't have a magic bullet or a silver bullet currently in my noggin this morning. So there you go, my friends. That wraps it up for this week. As always, a wonderful week. As always, thanks for tuning in and listening all the way until the end. This is just my, this is my favorite part of the week. Hopefully you had a wonderful week and we'll catch all of you right back here next time.